May 23rd, 3 a.m., 2024, Penn Forest area, Roanoke, Virginia. Alyssa had a chilling experience. I've known Alyssa for several years, and it's safe to say Alyssa is a remarkable young lady. She's from a good family living in uh, southwest Roanoke County. She's well-educated, very professionally known for her attention to detail. She's also an exceptional stylist and makeup artist. But just recently, she had something occur that was quite disturbing. In her own words, I was outside my father's home, waiting on the curb for an Uber to take me to work. As soon as I walked out from the garage, weirdness started to happen. Happening on a street, two-way, I could hear what sounded like a couple of dogs barking at each other which in itself isn't that strange. But then I could tell things were escalating between them. I heard them getting more aggressive, and the sound coming from one of them was getting higher pitched and to the point where it was more of a, a scream. Or maybe I'm mistaken the animal. I mean, cat sort of scream, but bark as well. The noises abruptly stopped, and it was most intense. What happened? Did one of them run off? Did somebody come out and check on the, you know, commotion and break them up? No clue. I still had 15 minutes until my, until my ride came. So all I could do was stand out there with my phone light on. A moment or so later, the silence was broken by the call of some animal a few yards down the street. At first, I wasn't too freaked out. Might be, you know, close to empty forested hills, but this is still suburbs in a decent neighborhood. The noise happened again, though. Whatever it was sounded weirdly aggressive. Reek is my best description of what I could discern. I shined my light in the direction. I thought it was coming, from, you know, from that area. Nothing. I still tried to play it off because my ride would be here soon. The following ring made my phone raise again. Now across the neighbor's yard, sitting just in the tree line, were two eyes reflecting my light. I didn't want to believe that they were looking at me specifically. I wasn't a threat. I was somewhat far away, but the longer I started with, started with my light, the more I realized they weren't just looking in my direction. They were undoubtedly transfixed on me. I couldn't see what the eyes were part of because of how dark everything was. All I could tell was that it was very low to the ground. With more vigor than before, it shouted another, Reek! Now I'm scared, right? Now I'm considering to just haul butt back inside and wait for the ride to get here first. The sound of, Reek! You! is from his throat is when well, I decided nope heck with this and I ran back inside I waited for as long as I could until the uber arrived and even then I was panicking thinking whatever it was was sitting right outside the door thankfully it wasn't I hopped in the uber and didn't see anything from the safety of the car's window I made it to work a little shaken, but otherwise okay. I've never experienced any high strangeness like that before in this area. Not saying that what I saw or heard was supernatural or origin, but maybe it was just a raccoon or a terrible case of the rabies. But either way, the whole thing had me spooked. I asked Alyssa for more details how close it was, if there was any form in the shadow she could see, 
She sent me photos of the area and wrote me. It was about 20 or feet or so away from where I was standing, if I remember correctly. I didn't hear or see any other animals around at the time. I don't think the surrounding neighbors have outdoor pets either. And from what I could tell, the angle of the eyes, it didn't have its head turned down or tilted. From the ground, it was staring straight at me, almost like it was looking with my own eyes. The eyes weren't too high off the ground, maybe six inches from the ground, if I had to guess. It reminded me of a way a four-legged animal would crouch and begin to slink forward sometimes. The eyes never blinked, but they were forward-facing. They were the same size eyes you could expect to see on a large dog or even a person. They had a distinctly yellow to them. I couldn't quite tell just how large or the whole thing was. The darkness kept it hidden like a veil even when I was shining my light at it. In researching this, there was only a few animals whose size, eyes shine, and behavior fit close enough. Coyote was the closest, but I know of no coyote vocalization like, you know, the words she had heard. A domestic dog like a husky that could possibly do that has a different eye shine. I asked Alyssa, could think of anything else before or since. I think the only thing I could add to this story is that a week prior to the incident, I was sitting in my room at night and I heard the same far off sounds of animals and dogs fighting over each other. I thought it was just somebody's outdoor pet getting rowdy, so I didn't put much thought into it anymore you know, at the time. So I asked Alyssa if she would like me to come out and do an investigation of the area, look for tracks, set up camera traps. She declined in true Appalachian fashion, choosing to let that neighbor go on about their business privately. It's considered impolite to gossip or fuss about such things around here. Wow. Yeah, man. Mm. Man, that's one of them, golly. I mean, you know, you hear stories about, you know, weird creatures, wood boogers, and hay and stuff from the mountains and stuff. But from time to time, you know, you'll get one like this that, you know, when it's just, you know, so many of them has the same characteristics and things, the same hollers, screams, things like that. Sometimes you'll get one like this that's completely different. Yeah, and it's spooky as heck. Yeah. Definitely. Um. Yeah, my mind just kept wondering what that could be the whole time. Yeah. The craziest I mean, thing about it was the uh, the the almost person sounding uh, the creak you sounding. Yeah. Yeah. That was strange. I, and, uh, I suppose that's why they, they thought it was a, a shapeshifter, possibly. Yeah, yeah, very possible. But then again, you know, they said that, you know, it's, all I could see was eyes and it looked like maybe kind of hunched forward. It was low to the ground. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder, maybe could it possibly have been maybe a Grafton monster, possibly? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Uh. Whatever it was, definitely freaky. It was neat, and just it just all around different. I really yeah yeah it. yeah. I was uh, I was manning the table up there at the Withville Festival, and a longtime fan uh, came running over to me. She said, "You will not believe the story I've got for you." <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it was this, yeah. Man, oh man. Yeah, uh, I was talking to somebody, I think maybe selling a shirt or a sticker or something, and she to told me that. I, I kind of cranked my head. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Really? <laughs> wow. No, I had some people tell me some interesting stories while I was there, but definitely this one takes the cake. Oh man, I can imagine. So I told I told the people who told me the stories there to send them in, but this was so far this is the only one I've gotten. But I'm definitely happy this is the one I've gotten. Yeah, hey, who knows? Maybe this will inspire the other ones to send some in. Yeah. Uh, if any of you folks got some, send them in. Yeah, definitely. Send it to SpookyAppalachia at gmail.com. Absolutely. Or P.O. Box, uh, Spooky Appalachia, P.O. Box 569, Radford, Virginia, 241. One four three, and uh, if you want to take a guess at what you think this creature could have been, let us know in the comments. Yeah, because we definitely want to hear from you folks. Yeah, uh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share this out to all your friends. Definitely. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. God bless and have a good one. Night, folks. <laughs>